Some of the most fundamental questions that astronomers have been trying to answer for decades are, how old is the universe, and what did it look like when it was young? How did the first stars and galaxies form, and how did they change the universe forever? Fortunately, today we have a breakthrough discovery that could change everything we know about the universe and its history. A team of astronomers led by Dr. Steven Finkelstein from the University of Texas recently confirmed the existence of one of the earliest galaxies ever observed in the universe, named Maisie's Galaxy, after the daughter of one of the researchers. This galaxy is so ancient and distant that it was born before most of the stars and galaxies we know today. It is also so faint and red that it is almost invisible to our eyes, even with the most powerful telescopes. But thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, they were able to detect and study this galaxy and reveal some exciting and shocking secrets. The astronomers have published their findings in a paper in Nature, and they have revealed that Maisie's galaxy is from 390 million years after the Big Bang. That's right, 390 million years. That's less than 3% of the current age of the universe, which is about 13.8 billion years. That means Maisie's galaxy is one of the four earliest confirmed galaxies ever observed in the universe. These kinds of discoveries puzzle scientists and make them rethink their theories about the universe and its age. For example, we recently discussed a paper by Rajendra Gupta from the University of Ottawa, who claimed that the universe may be around 26.7 billion years old, rather than the commonly accepted 13.8 billion. He proposed a new model that combines Zwicky's tired light theory and Dirac's evolving coupling constants to reinterpret the redshift of light from distant galaxies and extend the time frame for galaxy formation. This paper has generated a lot of criticism and controversy among astronomers and physicists. You can watch our video, link in the description. In this video, we will explore why this discovery is so important. What does it tell us about the epoch of reionization, when the first stars and galaxies ionized the hydrogen gas in the early universe? And what does it mean for our current view of the universe and its age? Before we get into today's video, I want to share with you something amazing that I've been using for over a week now. It's the hover pen from Novium, a pen that can levitate and rotate in mid-air. Yes, you heard me right, a pen that can defy gravity. How cool is that? The hover pen is not only a stunning piece of art that will make your desk look awesome, but also a functional and ergonomic writing tool that has a magnetic base and a smooth tip. It is also compatible with any standard refill, so you can use it for a long time. I've been using this hover pen to write and outline the scripts for the videos that we produce for you every day, and I can tell you that it is a game changer. It makes writing so much easier and fun, and it also inspires me to explore new ideas and perspectives about space and astronomy. It's like having a little piece of outer space on my desk. If you are interested in getting your own hover pen, Novium has kindly offered a special discount for NASA Space News viewers. You can get 10% off on any hover pen model by using the code NASA Space News at checkout. You can find the links with discounts in the description below. Don't miss this opportunity to get your hands on this amazing product. Trust me, you will love it. Thank you Novium for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to the Maisie's Galaxy. As you probably know, the universe started as a hot and dense singularity then expanded and cooled down, forming hydrogen and helium atoms, then dark matter and gravity then clumped these atoms together, forming the first stars and galaxies. This process, according to current estimations, took about 400 million years, which is a very short time compared to the age of the universe. The first stars and galaxies were very different from the ones we see today. They were much smaller, less massive, less luminous, less metallic, and more star-forming than modern galaxies. They were also very rare and isolated, as they formed in regions where dark matter was more concentrated. These primordial galaxies were the building blocks of the later generations of stars and galaxies that shaped the structure and evolution of the universe. But how do we know all this? How can we observe these ancient galaxies that are so far away from us? Well, this is where astronomy gets really fascinating and challenging. To observe these early galaxies, we need to use powerful telescopes like James Webb, with the most sophisticated techniques to measure their distance and properties, such as spectroscopy, which analyzes the spectrum of light emitted or absorbed by an object. But there is another problem. These early galaxies are not only far away from us in space, but also in time. 
because light travels at a finite speed, when we look at distant objects in space, we also look back in time. The farther away an object is from us, the longer its light takes to reach us, and therefore, the older it appears to us. This means that when we observe these early galaxies with our telescopes, we are not seeing them as they are now, but as they were billions of years ago. This also means that their light has been stretched by the expansion of the universe, making them appear very red and dim. For example, an object with a redshift of z equal sign, one has its light stretched by a factor of 2 compared to its original wavelength. This means that it is about 8 billion light years away from us. A light year is how far light travels in one year, and we see it as it was about 8 billion years ago. With redshift, we can also learn about an object's motion relative to us. If an object is moving away from us, its light will appear redder than it actually is. But redshift is not only a measure of distance and motion, it is also a measure of age. The higher an object's redshift is, the earlier it formed in the history of the universe. For example, an object with a redshift of z equal 10 has its light stretched by a factor of 11 compared to its original wavelength. This means that it is about 13.4 billion light years away from us, and we see it as it was about 13.4 billion years ago, when the universe was only about 400 million years old. So, how did Maisie's galaxy form, and what is its redshift? Well, Maisie's galaxy formed from a cloud of primordial gas that collapsed under its own gravity and started to form stars. This happened in a region where dark matter was more abundant than average, creating a gravitational well that attracted more gas and stars. Maisie's galaxy was one of the first galaxies to form in this region, and it grew larger and brighter as more stars were born inside it. But Maisie's galaxy was not alone. It was surrounded by other galaxies that also formed from primordial gas and dark matter. These galaxies were clustered together in a large-scale structure called a protocluster, which is the precursor of a galaxy cluster, which is a group of hundreds or thousands of galaxies that are bound together by gravity and form some of the largest structures in the universe. Maisie's galaxy and its protocluster were observed by James Webb as part of a survey called SEERS, which aims to study how galaxies formed and evolved over cosmic time. Sears used Webb's NERCAM to take images of a patch of sky in infrared wavelengths, looking for faint and distant galaxies that are invisible to other telescopes. Using these images, Sears detected Maisie's galaxy as a very faint red dot among many other galaxies. But to confirm its distance and properties, Sears needed more data. That's why they used Webb's near-infrared spectrograph, or near-spec, to take spectra of Maisie's galaxy and other candidates. A spectrum is a graph that shows how much light an object emits or absorbs at different wavelengths or colors. By analyzing a spectrum, astronomers can learn a lot about an object, such as its chemical composition, temperature, brightness, motion, and redshift. With NearSpec, Sears successfully obtained the spectra of Maisie's galaxy and other candidates and measured their redshifts. They found that Maisie's galaxy has a redshift of z equal 11.4. This means that its light has been stretched by a factor of 12.4 compared to its original wavelength. This also means that it is about 13.5 billion light years away from us, and we see it as it was about 13.5 billion years ago, when the universe was only about 390 million years old. This makes Maisie's galaxy one of the four earliest confirmed galaxies ever observed in the universe. The other three are GNZ11 with Z equal 11.1, Max 0647 JD with Z equal 10.8, and UDFY 3815539 with Z equal 10. But what makes Maisie's galaxy so special? Why is it so important for our understanding of the early universe? Maisie's galaxy is special because it can tell us about the epoch of reionization, or even make us rethink everything we know about our universe. In the first scenario, we have a galaxy that formed in the epoch of reionization, meaning that we have a source of information that tells us what happened when the first stars and galaxies ionized the hydrogen gas in the early universe, turning it from neutral to ionized. This process changed the physical and chemical properties of the gas and affected the formation and evolution of subsequent generations of stars and galaxies. It also left an imprint on the cosmic microwave background radiation, 
which is the oldest light in the universe. The cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMB for short, is a faint glow of microwave radiation that fills the entire sky. It was created about 380,000 years after the Big Bang, when the universe became transparent enough for photons to travel freely. The CMB is like a snapshot of the universe at that time, and it contains a lot of information about its temperature, density, and composition. But the CMB is not uniform. It has tiny fluctuations or variations in its temperature and polarization, which are caused by different physical processes in the early universe. One of these processes is reionization. When the first stars and galaxies ionized the hydrogen gas, they created bubbles of ionized gas around them. These bubbles scattered some of the CMB photons, changing their direction and polarization. By measuring these changes, astronomers can learn about the timing and extent of reionization. One of the ways to measure these changes is to use a parameter called tau, which is the optical depth of reionization. Tau tells us how much the CMB photons were scattered by ionized gas along their path to us. The higher tau is, the more scattering occurs, and therefore the more ionized gas there was in the early universe. The latest measurement of tau by the Planck satellite, which observed the CMB with unprecedented precision, is 0.054 as 0.007. This means that about 5% of the CMB photons were scattered by ionized gas. This also means that reionization started around 400 million years after the Big Bang and ended around 1 billion years later. As you can see, these measurements pose a problem. According to our current models of galaxy formation and evolution, there are not enough stars and galaxies in the early universe to produce enough ionizing photons to complete reionization by 1 billion years after the Big Bang. This is called the impossible early galaxy problem. How can we solve this problem? That's where we get to the second scenario, that we have a galaxy that challenges our current view of the epoch of reionization, meaning that we have a puzzle that makes us question our theories and models about how and when this process occurred. This puzzle could also have implications for our estimate of the age of the universe and our understanding of its history and structure. Maisie's galaxy is one example of this puzzle. It is so old and distant that it existed before most of the stars and galaxies that we think were responsible for reionization. It is also so bright and massive that it could produce enough ionizing photons to create a large bubble of ionized gas around it. In fact, Maisie's galaxy could be one of the sources that started reionization in its region of space. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and share this video with your friends. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. We would love to hear from you. And if want to keep up to date with space news, visit our website at nasaspacenews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.